Hello and welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller and we're going to finish up our trash can model here in Hexagon. Now the first part, modeling the trash can was, I think you will agree, extremely easy. And it looks uh, it looks really good. The The lid for it will be a little bit more complicated because it's a little bit more detailed and there are some modeling considerations that we will need to consider before we uh, use the various tools here in Hexagon. But we'll just take uh, one little step at a time and you'll see it's going to be fairly easy. So with that said, I went ahead and modeled my trash can lid and made the pieces of hardware to go on there and it uh, it looks exactly like the uh, trash can here in our reference image that I got off of Google so let's get rid of all these uh, extra pieces I'll delete them I'm gonna change my lighting make it a little bit easier for me to see my uh, object now what I want to do is I want to select uh, one of these edges here for my trash can lid. I want to loop it. So, and I'm choosing one of these uh, selected edges because it's already in the position that it needs to be and it's already of the correct circumference that I need it to be. So with that selection I'm going to come up here to curve extraction and now I have a curve that is of the proper dimension and pretty much in the right location to create my trash can lid. So with that, I'm going to I'm going to hide my trash can because I don't want it to get in the way, visibly anyway. Well, like I did in Photoshop, drawing these lines to outline the characteristics of the garbage can. I want to take into consideration the same characteristics of the garbage can lid. And now this is the only reference image I have, but it looks like we've got another lip or another edge or rim right around here. I'm not sure what to make of this profile right in here. Let me s right in here. It looks like maybe it it has this, let me do it on a dark area so you can see, kind of this profile, kind of like a Roman OG profile. Yeah, I'm not sure, so I, I pretty much just have to guess. But I'm going to go with creating a, if this is the, the, the trash can lid, and if we're looking at it from the side, this is going to be my lid. I'm going to have it sweep up come over and then over again and essentially this will be my trash can lid. Of course I'll also have these graduated uh, you know little plateaus here as well. So all I can do is the best I can based off of what I perceive this reference image to portray. So let's come over here to my circle and click on vertex modeling and I'm going to choose my sweep surface tool now what I want to do is I want to come up just a little bit because I want to form the um, the lip that's what I want for the lip that's a small little space there that looks good okay now what I do want to do is dial in an inner radius so I'm going to hit my shift key shift button and come into the radial function. I want to come in a little bit like that. Now I'm going to hit it three times and come up to the axial function. And it looks like I just want to come up probably about that much. Now if I'm off in any of these measurements, I, that's not a big deal. And no problem at all. I can always come back and make some corrections. Okay, I'm going to click there. Now I'm going to dial in another inner radius. And I'm going to come up just a little bit. Now the reason why I'm zooming back in and out is because I want to keep looking at my image here, my reference image. 
Okay, uh, now this I just have to eyeball. Mm, come in. Now come up. Now I try to make these elevation changes, these height changes, identical. But if I don't, I can always come in and uh, do some more repair work. Let me see. We need one, two, three, four. Got one. You know, I'm going to have to back up. I've not allowed myself enough room here. Okay, that's one, two, three. Okay. Three. I'll come up. And now I'll come in. finish it off here. Okay. It looks pretty crude, but when we apply a little bit of uh, smoothing to it, it takes on a completely different characteristic. So, I like that. Let me check the height of it. Let me make it just a little bit larger. There we are. And this might end up running into a third tutorial because of uh, having to make the hardware. So, I like what I've done so far. Let me take one more gander at it. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to create these little uh, ribs here, these little, um, I'm not into engineering and that sort of thing, so I have no idea what these are called, but they look like ribs to me. So I will simply refer to them as that. What I want to do is I'm going to turn off my dynamic geometry by uh, clicking this little lightning bolt here. Uh, in playing around with this, I, I realized I needed a higher number of polygons in order to make these ribs look smooth. So that's why I turned off, uh, I had the smoothing enabled and I disabled it. Now I'll add it uh, one more level of smoothing, and I think it uh, will turn out a lot better. So I'm going to select these edges right along here. I'm going to hit my ring command. I can hide that. I'm going to come over to my one over tool. Now what I want to do is I want to select six. Uh, I want to have six selections, one, two, three, four, five, six. But I have to be careful because uh, when I was doing this, I noticed that sometimes even though it looks like I have six, they were not evenly spaced. So I really had to eyeball it and double check, and I even had to count the spaces over the number of spaces. And that looks pretty good. So just like we did in creating the ribs for the trash can, I'm going to do the same thing for the ribs for my garbage can lid. And I'm going to click on the extract around. Come on, tool work for me. There we are. And that looks good, except it didn't keep the, the my original selection selected. So I want to come and do it again. There we are. Now my original selection is selected. I don't know. This is a funky little tool. It kind of has a mind of its own. And now I will just raise it up a little bit like that. Now let's click off of it and see what we've got. And by golly, we've got our garbage can lid. 
and that looks like it might have been a difficult procedure, but uh, that one over tool that we uh, that we used uh, really helped simplify this little this little thing, this one over function that really really helps simplify this. So that is our garbage can lid. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable my smoothing. We're finished with it for now. And now I'm going to close the top. Because if I didn't, this is the effect we would have if I closed the top. Let me validate and click off. You see that uh, it kind of looks like the edge of, a, of, a, of the crust of a pie, all those little pinched areas. And I don't like that. So I'm going to disable my smoothing. And now I'll add my top piece. And if I want, I can always come back and apply a little camphor or a chamfer right here on the edge. Let's see if it'll allow me to do that. It may be acting finicky. Oh, no, a nice little rounded edge there. Okay, so there's our trash can lid. And I'd say that uh, that looks pretty good. So it could be a little larger, according to the picture anyway. My reference image there, that looks a little bit better. Okay, now on to the fun part, which is creating the hardware uh, lid. And I will go ahead and you know, I'm going to, before I start anything else, I'm going to center these. The y, the y position is fine. I'm going to change their x and y coordinates. So it's centered in the middle of my viewing window, and uh, it'll help me as we get further down the line on this. Okay, I'm just going to create a box. Now, in the past, when I have had to create something like these trash can lids that always meant having to come up here and use these, at least to me, these dreaded line tools, I could never get anything to work the way I wanted it to work. I could ne the end result was never what I wanted. So if you are wondering how I'm going to make this, I would encourage you to look at the tutorial I did on making sewer pipes because I'm going to do that exact same procedure and I actually go into a lot more detail on how on how I arrived at this and and it might make a little bit more understanding so if you haven't seen it already then you definitely want to check out the tutorial on making sewer pipes whether or not you want to make sewer pipes or not is not really the issue but you'll see the technique I used on uh, doing what we're doing here so Looking at these garbage can handles, they look like they uh, it flares out and then it comes back in and it's narrower here than it is out there. So I'm going to grab a box and I'm just going to taper down the bottom of it just a little bit like that. And I'm going to grab this edge, that edge, and I'm going to add a camphor to them. I'm going to add four points and try to duplicate this profile for this handle and I guess that looks that looks pretty good uh, with my select edges I'm gonna loop that edge on lines I'm gonna extract that curve now this box that we originally had I'm gonna delete it and there is our the profile that we want for our trash can handle. I'm going to select this uh, edge, not this edge, this uh, yeah edge right here, and I'm just going to bring it in a little bit, just like that. Now what I want to do is adjust its X and Y 
so that it is centered over my trash can. I guess I could taper it down a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. That's about to scale. Okay, I'm going to add some thickness to it. Come over. Oops, not Boolean, no. Uh -uh. I'm going to add some thickness to it. And oh that looks that looks all right. Now I'm gonna move that up. I'm gonna come over here to 3D primitives. I'm gonna create a cylinder. I'm gonna have zero sections and I'm gonna give it twelve points. That should be good. I'll put caps on it. Validate that. I'm gonna turn it horizontally. I'm gonna adjust its X and Y position here in my view. And I'm just going to scale it down. And put it right here where it belongs. It's perfectly centered because I had zeroed out the X and Y position. Everything is uh, centered. I don't have to worry about eyeballing it or using the snap align or lay on tools to uh, position things. I'd say that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab a cube. And again, I'm going to zero out these positions. Bring it down here. Adjust it down. You know, this thing would probably be welded by some manner to this object, I guess. There we are. Now it looks like over here I've got some rivets that are holding it in. So I'll want to create some rivets so this can be anchored to the trash can. I'm going to come over here grab a sphere. And, uh, oh, nine points will be fine. Use my select edges, select that edge, select that edge, select that edge, loop it, hit F to turn all those into faces, delete that. I'm going to spin this around. I'm going to close off the bottom of it. Now what I want to do is, again, center this. There we are now. I just have to scale it down. These will be my little rivets. And I do want to squash it down. And that's a little large still. So well, that's rivet number one. Actually, now that I have its size, I'll use my lay on command oops and I'm gonna hit control D and duplicate that and move let me turn on my wireframe so I can see the edges a little bit better okay hide my dis my hide my dynamic geometry let's select everything and we're going to group it. Bring it right down here on top of our trash can lid. I'm going to select my handle. And I think it's, is it this thing? Yeah, it's that thing. Okay. I'm going to hide that, hide that, hide that box. I'm going to select all the handle in that um, cylinder I created. I'm just going to rotate them. Now I'll enable these again. Oops. to rotate it a little bit more. Oh, 
There we are. All right, let's see what we've got. Turn off my wireframe. Look at that. That's a good-looking trash can handle. Okay, now I'm going to call it quits here with this tutorial because we're running into 20 minutes and it gets a little lengthy and the file size tends to run up and takes longer to download and view. So I'm going to cut it short here and we'll create another quick tutorial for the other pieces. So thanks for watching here at Geek at Play Studios and come back and watch the third tutorial for making a trash can lid. I'm Gary Miller. You guys uh, have a good day.